Okay, this is uh, part 16 of the 1968 convertible Mustang that's being uh, converted into a Shelby GT500 KR car. And this is probably going to just be a short video. I wanted to show you uh, how the headlights mount uh, onto the uh, inside fenders and how they how they work. So uh, let me show you how that works. Let's open the hood up. Get this plastic back. Okay, now the outside trim ring that's that should be actually a chrome ring. Uh, it's a different part number by instead of an A designator at the end, it's a C designator, which basically stands for chrome, I guess. I don't know. But uh, what you got to do is uh, let's take this one off. Uh, this is that ring. And you could use these rings. Uh, they're, they're designed, they have these little notches and they go into a specific spot and uh, you can see that here that's where the where the uh, screws mount to there's three of them around it uh, but let me take this nose piece off okay now that the nose piece is off it has two mounting brackets it has an inner mounting bracket and an outer mounting bracket and these tie into, there's actually locations for that. These two actually go into the inner fender uh, that mount to the uh, radiator support. And then these mount, obviously, to the outside of the fender. Um, these, these headlight buckets are actually, originally, I think they're from uh, like a 1965 or 4. Uh, Falcon or Comet headlight bucket and so what they did is they just made uh, a mounting bracket this is zinc coated but a mounting bracket just out of sheet metal it's like 16 gauge sheet metal and they made mounted made a stamp bracket there and they did the same thing over on this side and then the adjustment for the uh, adjusting the, the, the headlight bucket. There's two of them. There's one to adjust it from, you know, this way. And then there's one up on top that either tilts the headlight back or forward to get the correct adjustment. And then this headlight bezel or the front nose piece, and it goes on. And I've been working on it. I've had to do a lot of modifications, modifications to that, but you can see where the, the the stainless steel ring to get the headlight bucket out. You should be able to get the headlight bucket out. There's three of those. There's one there, and one there, and one there. And then the adjustments for the screws to adjust the headlight itself go uh, on the top, and then on this particular view, it'd be to your left. Uh, and the thing about these parts, you know, I've, I've, I had to go back and work this one a little bit. I didn't like the way it fits, so I've, I've been working on putting some fiberglass fill in there to get it right. I think I got this one pretty good now. It's, it's pretty much level with it and uh, pretty good all the way in the back. Now, when you, when you, when you put those headlight buckets in, uh, it, it's just not like bolting them in and they're going to be perfectly aligned. You have to manipulate them a little bit to uh, to get them to, to line up as good as you can. As you can see, this one is slightly out a little bit, uh, but it's still it's still pretty centered all the way around. So um, I, I, I think I'm pretty good. And then it's also got a provision all the way in the back here. That's where the wires go through all the way in the back. And the other one, hopefully, will be... No, it's on the 
on the outboard side, but it still should be enough wires because the wire loom is up underneath there. So, um, we got those mounted. So uh, here again, it's another thing. I'm just trying to get anything that requires a drill to the body um, before paint work. I'm just trying to get those those little details worked out. I want to make sure the headlight assemblies actually go in the headlight buckets correctly um, and, and, and they mount up good. And this one's uh, same thing. It looks pretty good. And I can adjust this. I can move this over a little bit. It looks like it needs to come over just a little bit more on this side. And I, I can do that pretty easy. And the way you would do that, uh, let me get this off. And the way you can do that, uh, you don't you don't really need to mess with these two. Uh, what you can do is you can come over here, and these are actually just slotted, and so you can move so you can move the headlight this way, or you can move the headlight that way. You can also move it up a little bit or down a little bit to get the optimum alignment you want. Uh, but here again. This is another thing on uh, on YouTube that I, I haven't seen anybody really talk about is how the the head Shelby headlight assemblies uh, mount to to the to, to the car themselves. Um, so you know you may be seeing stuff here that you don't see anywhere else. Uh, I don't particularly care for these these. This is all the hardware I had at the time. I, I got to find some body some body bolts to put in there and I've got three washers behind there because these this piece on this on this uh, fenders actually got um, indents so I had to space it in between the indents to bring it out enough to get the, the support right. Let's see if you can see over here you can see how the fender has some indents and so I had to put washers in there to space it out because I didn't want to you you would distort this if uh, you just tried to bolt it up to it and I didn't want to do that so I've got three washers to space it out and then another bolt and washer out here but this I can get a longer the the one inch body bolts don't fit so I need to get some like an inch and a quarter uh, body bolts to to get that to fit up a little better so uh, uh, that's uh, pretty much it on the headlight buckets, and they're both they're both the same. Uh, you can see over here, it's essentially the same thing on the driver's side, and um, the, they're, they they sit they mount in there pretty good. And they're really solid. They're they're not going to rattle around. I mean, they're anchored. They're anchored really well in there, so that should not be a problem. So. Uh, I just thought I'd show you guys this, or just so you can see uh, what's involved in, in mounting the headlight buckets uh, for the Shelby front nose piece. Um, and it's really, I mean, for the fiberglass work, I mean, all you need to do is get some fiberglass body filler, you know, the short glass fiberglass body filler, and you can you can fill it in and you can grind it down and as long as you have some good surface to work on you can uh, you can get the gaps right and that's what I was working on there I'm trying to get the gaps where they uh, fit correctly on the car uh, <clears throat> and then uh, last on lap as episode I was talking about the uh, the mounting configuration for the uh, the uh, seat belts, and you can see over there, uh, what I did is I actually got in behind there. Let's see if I can do this. I got in behind here, and that that's actually a seat belt bolt. Uh, I think there are obviously like a grade five, or uh, they possibly could even be a higher but I think they're a grade five because you don't want them to be super you don't, you know they're great in tensile but they're a lot of bolts aren't great in shear 
which would be going that way. Not that you'd ever have enough inertia to rip that out. You'd damage your shoulder beyond repair at that point. So anyway, this is the way the seat belt for the uh, Shelby uh, shoulder harness will work. And I also made these brackets here. Uh, I hope I'm pointing the camera at the correct spot, but I made this bracket uh, to help the guiding because I didn't want in case the plastic piece this this piece got behind it you couldn't fish it out without taking the body pieces apart so what I did is <clears throat> I made this bracket uh, so it, it actually mechanically stops now I don't know if the original Shelby's had that but here again <clears throat> it's something that I wanted because I you know I'm trying to make it so that you know, you're not having to take the car apart just because of some minor little error. And you also see that here again, this is a upper piece of the uh, convertible uh, sheep, uh, the upper panel where the, the armrest would be down here. This is the upper piece and you have to cut them. And I had to modify it even more uh, to, to get the uh, a retract uh, shoulder harness in there and it looks like I've got two different pieces uh, looks like I have a um, this is a this is the correct one this is, looks like for a 1967 68 car it's got the correct little radius regards to how the sheet metal is bent and then I've got another one over here you can see that one walk over here and you can see this one, and this one really baffles me. It's 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 different. It's different. You can see you can see there where it should be coming out around there, but it's not. It's curved. So I'm guessing that this one's probably a 65 or a 66. So there is a slight difference between between the two pieces. Uh, but here again. Same issue, I, I, I mounted a bolt there and then uh, I welded it to, to tack it in place so that it's uh, properly secured. And uh, so, and I also have the, you know, little, made the little bracket there too. I haven't primed that one over there or anything. I was just trying to get all the fitment right so that everything is correct for the, the car as far as trying to get the fitment and uh, body alignment. But I just, here again, uh, as I said before, I'm just scared to death to take a drill, you know, scare the car with a drill after it's been painted or, you know, crawling all over the body after you got new paint on it. I'm just trying to avoid that and thinking of thing, everything I can think of that, uh, requires any kind of modification or any kind of uh, drilling or whatnot to make sure that it gets the best uh, attention now instead of trying to fight it after it's painted. So anyhow, uh, I think those came out well. So the next step is just uh, I'm going to bolt that uh, that nose piece, that headlight bucket back up in there and then just final do the final little body work and skim coat prior to uh, painting the car. And then I got to go in the back and I, the, the, the rear tail panel uh, where I cut those pieces out. I just want to clean those up in the inside and uh, I am getting close to thinking about pulling the front end off and primering them and possibly uh, primering the rest of the car to uh, get ready for paint. I also found solved the transmission leak problem. It was overfilled and there's a vent uh, inside the inside on the on the case of the uh, of the transmission and the transmission fluid is just leaking out the vent because it's over full. Uh, so I, I took about two and a half quarts out and it's still over full. <clears throat> I need to take about another quart out of it uh, 
and I think uh, and the 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 drip is basically gone. So the transmission leak has been resolved. I I didn't think that you know putting a brand new seal in and not even running is going to uh, have an effect on it. So I got that resolved. Um, so this is uh, this is the end of uh, part 16. Uh, here again, I you know. I'm just trying to show people that are, you know, what it is to to to, to do a Shelby conversion. Uh, it's really not that hard, you know, to, to put the fiberglass pieces on and stuff. But the really, if you want to do a, a really good job with it and try to make it, you know, so the pieces aren't all crooked and stuff, and you know, paying a little attention to it, and it doesn't take much to. Just take the part off, put it back on, take it off, put it on, and until you you get the body lines right on the car, and uh, it you know it's, it it fits up pretty good. So um, anybody can do it, you know. I'm far from a, a a car expert or a body expert. I mean, I I, I essentially work on Mustangs, and I, I enjoy the '60. 67 and 68 is the 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 car I grew up with. Uh, I, I really like the body style of this car, even if it, it just being a Mustang. But the the Shelby, I mean, that's just takes it to a different level. Uh, it's just a it's a dream, one of my dream cars, and uh, so uh, working on it and. Uh, Probably won't be doing any more videos for a while. Uh, if I do, you'll just see another picture of it, probably with in body, you know, just in, in primer, possibly. But uh, and I might show the back rear after I finish the tail panel. I just gotta put some filler in there and get you know, because I welded those pieces in. I'm just trying, just want to get them smoothed out so they look like something. So anyway, this is the end of. Uh, part 16 and uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you enjoy it I'm gonna have a lot of additional videos coming up and another project I'll work on after this one is probably the 1924 Buick uh, it's a cool car and uh, we gotta get it running and driving and see what it needs I mean, the car was pretty original, so uh, anyhow, thanks for watching, and if you're interested, you know, subscribe, and uh, so when I put out a new one, you'll, you'll, it'll be on your postings to see it, so, all right, thank you so much, bye.